Welcome back to the program, Lou and Jackie Good here. Morning. And all week long, boy, we have had some really special people in town, courtesy of our friends over at DMAC. It's the 10th anniversary of Celebrate Innovation Week mm -hmm. over at DMAC over yeah. on the Western Campus. And it continues on today with some incredible speakers. The best part about this, completely open to the public and absolutely free. And one of the big attractions and one of the big things that we were talking about this year was the Apollo program. Of course, uh, last year celebrating 50 years of the manned mission of Man in Space with the Apollo program. We are lucky enough to have a couple of the astronauts join us here in studio on Tuesday. But yesterday is when they had the Apollo panel where they had four members of the Apollo program that were answering questions and talking about their experience with the Apollo program, including uh, one guy named uh, Jerry Griffin, who was in mission control for all of the manned missions for Apollo. He was in town as well. Three different astronauts. You're wondering what it was all about? Let's take a look. I think that this program, the Apollo program, in my opinion, is, is one of the, if not the greatest thing we've ever done as a country. So our topic today is innovation in the space race era and beyond. So in 1957, as many of you know, Sputnik was launched by the Soviet Union and thus began the space race. NASA was formed shortly thereafter. President Kennedy said, guys, we're going to the moon and we're gonna do it by the end of the decade. Have at it. Now this was not a, a great interest in science or exploration on his part. This was a geopolitical mandate to show the world that the United States and the Western powers were the leaders in technology, education, engineering, and science. In World War II, we built in this country a great aviation industry. And much of that aviation uh, know-how was moved right into the space program. It had to go higher and faster and different materials. But we had a base of people that, for one thing, made it work. And we had support from both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat. We went through three presidents in that time and never, the support never wavered. And that's what we've lost in a way that we don't have now. We can't seem to get behind an issue like this one and, and make it happen. Back in the, in the late 50s and early 60s, there was a lot of unrest in this country. We'd had the Bay of Pigs. We'd had a bunch of other things happen. And I think this was also an attempt on his part to bring the country together because it was a goal that everybody in the country understood and supported, and I think that was very important. But I think there's also uh, a hidden component in all of that, uh, which to me is the key to why the Apollo program was successful and, and, and why this country has been so successfully in the market since then, and that is the development of technology that it took to go to the moon, do it safely, and bring people back. So to me, the development of technology in the program is almost as important as sending somebody to the moon. It's the technology to get you there that's important. Well, I thought we, uh, the mission itself, uh, the description of going to the moon, uh, it was intriguing enough that we had, I call it probably the strongest grassroots support we've had in a space program since. Uh, people could uh, relate to that and it was pretty spectacular to think about so in my opinion, what made that really in the end a success was the attitude of the people that we had that were participating in that program. We were willing to stick our necks out. And it's a good thing we were. So I'm just saying our attitude is something that we're going to have to uh, get back to, you know, to whether it's to go back to the moon or even eventually couple decades at least from now, go to Mars. Years ago I had the privilege of interviewing Gene Kranz, who was also a flight director during the Apollo and shuttle years. They looked back up at me with that crew cut and those steely missile man eyes of his, and he said, what America will dare, America can do. It gave me chills then, and it still does now, so let's dare again. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Really appreciate it.